So what you're looking at with Peter's principle, guys, here's the thing, okay? And again, this is going to be ultra short. A lot of you guys are hiring people or you'll see in organizations, maybe you'll bring on a buyer agent, a listing agent, maybe it'll bring a salesperson into your company, or you'll have an administrator in your company. You'll be like, I don't understand. They were really good before or like somewhere else. Peter's principle is a really interesting concept that you want to look up. Peter's principle basically means that we rise to the level of incompetence in our positions. So that means like sometimes I'll, I'll I'll use coaching as an example. I'll bring in somebody, okay, who's a, who's excellent at real estate, let's say, and I'll, they'll be like, I want to be a real estate coach. And I'll be like, that's amazing. Okay. And I'll bring that individual into the coaching industry and they suck. Um, they'll literally bomb as a real estate coach. And I'll be like, how can somebody have like X amount of experience as a realtor or like a rock star as a realtor, but then they enter the coaching industry and they've totally shit the bed. Um, this is Peter's principle. Okay. What it means is, is that you can't hire people and you should never, nobody talks about this, but everybody rises to positions and they're based. Usually we take people and we hire people in an organization based on the fact that they were really successful in one area and then we promote them. Okay, because that's how promotions work. So Peter's principle means that we rise to the level of incompetence in our job. So in this case where I hire a coach who's outstanding at real estate, that's not a transferable skill. So just because somebody can sell a shit ton of houses does not mean that they'd be a great coach. It's an entirely different skill set, vice versa. So I hear it all the time in coaching and like I'm using this as a good example. So I hear it all the time in coaching how somebody says, oh yeah, you know what, um, you know, I want my coach to be just as successful as I am. And I always say, well, that's not, you know, use Tiger Woods as an example, a terrible example, but whatever, he's all I got right now running through my head. So if you're Tiger Woods, Right. And, you know, is your coach going to be as good as Tiger Woods? Hell no. I hope not. Because if they were, they'd be making a billion dollars and they wouldn't be coaching Tiger Woods. So whenever I see that, Peter's principle means, in my case, I hire a coach that has a really high credit in sales. But then when I bring them into the coaching world, it doesn't mean they're going to be a good coach. It's usually not a transferable skill, so it probably won't work. Same thing in, in VP of sales and business teams. So I see it quite often where we'll take the strongest person in sales, in VP of sales, and we'll be like, we're going to make them the VP of sales. You're taking your highest performer and putting them into a role where they now have to teach and train and coach and mentor people on a team. It's not transferable most of the time. So, so if you rise that person, you might be like, how the hell did that person is my top salesperson? Now I've lost my top salesperson, but equally they might get off the team because they may not be the best fit for the position. Most of the times they won't be. Most of the times they'll struggle with the position because they're rising to the level of incompetence, it's called. So you're moving somebody who's your top sales rep in your team, taking the revenue and saying, fuck it, let's put them in as my VP of sales. And then you're going, why are they so terrible? Well, because they didn't have to teach other people. They didn't have to hold people accountable. They didn't have to deal with unmotivated individuals. There's so many things that that person didn't have to do with. So here's the thing, happens all the time. That's why also administratively, you've got to be very careful. You might have somebody who was outstanding as, let's say, you know, knows all about social media, knows all about this, that, but maybe they don't know how to run your social media. So, so you really have to ask yourself, and Peter's principle, what it means is, is that you're taking your best person, and instead of looking at the skills and the things that they bring to the table, you're assuming that just because they kick the shit out of their job that they're currently in or their role, you're assuming that they would be the most natural fit, but it's a different role. So you have to look at the level of incompetence and don't keep the person in that role. If you're seeing after 90 days that that person cannot cut it, don't try to make that person excellent at the role. Get them out of the role because that's the problem in organizations and in teams all the time is that you bring people on board and they rise to the level of incompetence. So, so it's just how it is, you know, the same reason why maybe and I love my clients who come to the table and they're like, they're the top CEOs of their real estate teams. But then they're like, Marianne, I don't want to coach, train, motivate. Like, I don't want to do that. And I'm like, you know, you're no good at it. They know they suck at it. They're, they're amazing at bringing in the business. They're amazing at relationships. Why would I take a CEO of a top producing real estate team that I coach and be like, Boom. Like Peggy Hill. She's a great example. I love her. She probably is bopping in here at some point. But anyway, would she be the best coach and trainer? She tells me all the time. I would love her as one of my coaches. I'm like, bring on. Come on. And she gets proposition all the time to be a coach. But she knows it. She's like, Marianne, I would be the worst coach in the industry. 
She's great at what she does. She needs to stay great at what she does. Why would I move her into something that she doesn't have the skills for? Just because she's one of the best in the industry and she knows the most information doesn't mean she would be a great coach. That's what we mean by taking somebody and being completely confused at why are they so good in one area? We give them a promotion and they suck at another. It's, it's transferable. It's the same thing. If you have buyer agents on your team and they come from a background where they've never lead generated or something like that. And then we're like, after 90 days, they still won't do the work. Well, then you have to ask yourself a question and say, Hey, listen, I got to really look at this. Is this really where I want to be? Is this really what I want to do? And then look, is their skills transferable? Okay. Probably not. So here's how you get around Peter's principle. Okay. Cause this is going to probably a lot of you are going to go, Oh my God, I never even thought of this. It is a hundred percent true. What is trans the best people for positions should not be based on the best performers in the current position that they're going to be working for, okay? So the best person in the position is one that you look at and you say, okay, VP of sales, let's use that. If you have a top producing sales rep, the question becomes, do they have the following skills? Have they coached, trained, mentor? Will they be able to slow down? Can they use the scripts of the team? Can they hold people accountable? Are they organized? Are they efficient? Are they motivating? Do they bring a positive attitude? Are they growth oriented? All that shit has to come to the table. You do not need to be the best sales rep on a team to be the best VP of sales for a team. Equally, same thing with administrative. If you have somebody in an administrative role and there and there's another opportunity for them to grow and be promoted, don't ask yourself the question, oh, they're the best at that role. It's time for a promotion. I better give it to them. Ask yourself the question, do they bring the skills, the training, the ability for this new role? What is the job description of the new role? And has that person identified that they have the skills in it? Now, if you really want somebody and you're like, man, we have a great rock star on the team and they don't have these skills. Okay, well, then that's where Peter's principle comes in. You need to have a plan over the next six months to a year which I've seen a lot of the big teams do. They don't make you know fast decisions on these things. They take a look and they go, okay, this person needs to develop the skills. Spend your time coaching and training the individual that you know will eventually be your VP of sales and say, okay, I'm going to coach you and train you or I'm going to give you the skills for this and we're going to test you and see if you can pick up on them because when you transition into the role, I want you to have the skills. Skills are trainable. Right? So, so that's why a lot of the times we don't spend enough time. If you have the right candidate, there's nothing wrong with moving them there, but you have to work on their skills and you have to have a solid plan that's six months to a year out that develops that individual. So you're not just putting them to a role and setting them up for failure. You could lose some of the best people in your organization because you do stuff like that. So, and you may have, like, often the times in big corporations, You'll see, you'll hear it all the time. Somebody say, well, I wanted that promotion and they didn't give it to me. They gave it to somebody with less experience. Well, they gave it to less experience, but did they give it to someone with the best skills? Okay, because every role has a specific set of skills and you shouldn't be promoting people based on anything other than does that individual have the skills to get the, the business where it needs to get to in the current role that they're going to be promoted into. And if they don't and you want them in that role, then you need to spend six months to a year developing them into that role. And that's probably one of the biggest things I see. Um, again, I see it pro- most predominantly in VP of sales roles on teams. I see it all the time there is that people are always like, that's why you can sort of ask yourself a question in in real estate, for example, do you bring on a VP of sales somewhere else, okay, from another company um, that has no real estate experience? The answer is, is that yes, you can absolutely do that, but then you would probably need the one area of skills that that person doesn't have would be real estate market knowledge. So they wouldn't be able to, to help coach the team on specific areas. Therefore, you would bring in like a lot of the teams, um, you know what, you would bring in someone like myself or whatever to be that person to bring in the real estate side of it, the coaching side of it. So it doesn't mean you have to say no to the person. It just means don't force that individual in an area where you clearly knew they didn't have the experience. You're going to have to look at the bigger picture and say, we're going to have to bring somebody in for that. So Peter's principle is one of my favorite hiring principles is that you're focused on hiring to skills. You're not focused on performance in current role. Performance on current role will flush out the skills, but it absolutely will not guarantee that a person is the best fit for a job. So be very cautious that you're not just taking somebody and giving them a raise or a promotion or whatever the case is, simply because they're the top performers in that role. Highly dangerous. 
Do they have the skills to do the next role? If they don't, then follow Peter's principle. If you want them in the role, six months to a year of training and coaching and development to build those skills, very specific on those skills, make sure that they're the right fit so they transition into that role. And if they can't, then Peter's principle highly suggests that when you're hiring for a role, you go into skills and you find the person in your team or your organization or in the outside that is absolutely spot on, specific for those skills so you can bring them to the next level. Okay, hopefully you enjoyed Peter's principle, learned something new, and watch out, guys. I'm going to leave a little bit of a tip here. We are going to be launching very soon. We have our summertime group coaching that we're um, going to introduce. This is going to be for agents who are struggling. You've had six months. You've had a really tough time. Okay, and we're going to be doing group coaching throughout the summertime with a specific group of people. It will probably not extend beyond September. Um, it is only for the summer months. So watch out. We'll be announcing that on the site soon. Bye, guys.